So we are back in Fort Lauderdale this week. I know it's been a few weeks since I posted, so thank you for bearing with me. It has been just a crazy few weeks being on set. In today's video, I wanna talk about the camera that I've been using, and that's the Sony a7 IV and the Tamron 35 to 150. So first off, this is not gonna be a full review. This is going to be me with my experience using the a7 IV over the past month or so and using the Tamron 35 to 150. But even right now, I'm using the a7 IV and I'm using it for one of the modes I was really excited about and it's the APS-C Super 35 crop mode. And I can use my prime lenses or my super small lenses that I have for my FX30 because it's a crop sensor camera. And I can use it on the a7 IV and get extremely great quality video. It's still above 4K, so we're still getting an oversampled image. And I could fully use my 11 millimeter that in the full frame mode, you're just gonna get severe vignetting. So the a7 IV has a 33 megapixel sensor that's backside illuminated. It shoots 4K 10-bit video using the full sensor at up to 30p. And then it shoots 4K 10-bit video up to 60p in the Super 35 APS-C crop mode. The full frame mode down samples from 7K, so you get a really sharp and crisp image. So in full frame using the 35 to 150 or any other full frame lens, I've actually liked the image a little bit better than the FX3 and the A7S III. That being said, if you're shooting stuff like this, talking heads, where there's not a lot of movement, there is a lot more rolling shutter in the A7IV than compared to the A7S III, FX3, et cetera. Now the Super 35 mode is a 1.5 crop, just like Sony's other crop sensor cameras. So it's not gonna be as bad as let's say Canon's crop sensor cameras, which is a 1.6 crop, or even the Pocket 6K, which is a 1.6 crop as well. And that's a cinema camera. So here is the camera and lens that I wanna to talk to you about today. As I said, it's not really a full review, but I wanna talk about my experiences using this setup because I've really enjoyed not only the a7 IV, but also the Tamron 35 to 150. I've never quite had a super zoom like this lens that performs so great with the image quality department uh, and be a full frame lens. I mean, the closest I ever got to something like this was really Sigma's 50 to 100. And of course, yeah, that is a really big lens. It's an f1.8, but that's also a crop sensor. So this lens has really made me appreciate uh, the super zoom department and the autofocus is great. We'll, we'll talk about this lens in a second. The main reason I got the a7 IV was so I can have a camera that not only works really great in full frame for stills, for video, but also works really great with crop sensor lenses because I have a lot of crop sensor lenses, Sony, Canon EF mount, and I wanted to be able to still use all of them and have great autofocus, what it may be, especially with these small lenses when it comes to more fun family photography videos or doing content creation. I really don't need these big lenses for it. So the a7 IV was one of the few cameras that Sony makes that really ticked off the boxes for me to where I could shoot full frame when I want, could also shoot crop sensor when I want, still have 10 bit video, still color grade the videos the way I want them to be, and just have really great results. The beginning of this video, I shot it all on the a7 IV, and now we've moved over to the FX30 that I have here in the studio with the audio handle. Speaking of the audio handle, Small Rig sent me out this cage and what makes this cage so special, is I'll show you right here, there's this add-on piece to the cage. Let's uh, see if we can focus up on it. And this piece oh, keeps moving. This piece right here actually lets you screw on the audio handle to your a7 IV. And not only does it make it work on the a7 IV, but it is now secure at that point and it's not gonna go anywhere. And so that was pretty much the big deciding factor of me keeping this camera and actually potentially going to sell my second FX30 because at this point, the a7 IV, due to its versatility, is the camera that I see using in most situations that are not for professional video. I see using it more for family photography, for content creation. And then of course, when I pair it with the 35 to 150, yes, then using it for more professional work. Now let's discuss the 35 to 150 for a second. So I really love this lens. I have never had a lens this versatile that you can go all the way from 35 to 150 and have really good autofocus. One uh, 
VND adapter that has really made this lens usable outdoors is this KNF filter. And it's an 82 millimeter two to six stop VND that not only is easy to use, but it also has a polarizer built in. And I was speaking to Josh Satin about this actually this morning. And one of the things that KNF did that I think a lot of companies need to start doing with VND filters is adding this polarization option because VNDs are essentially two polarizers put together to give you that you know ND effect. And sometimes it causes weird polarization issues on homes, whatever it may be. And so adding this polarizer to it eliminates that. So I was really stoked that they did this. And also the VND made it very easy to keep the 180 degree roll outdoors. Now I use this lens on a recent trip to North Carolina. I brought it around with me everywhere in my little six sling, uh, six liter sling bag from VSGO. And it was very small. But the one thing I noticed after a while is I've been so used to using these super compact uh, crop sensor lenses that it just added a lot of weight to my setup to the point where I didn't want to take out the a7 IV all the time just because of bringing the lens out, putting it together, holding this heavy setup in more situations where I rather have been a little bit more discreet in the small size of the 18 to 50 would definitely keep me there on the a7 IV. However, the image quality on this thing is just fantastic. I used it for behind the scenes photography on the last Star Trek fan film Axonar shoot, and I didn't plan to get as much photos as I did, but this thing is so versatile, especially uh, in low light when I took off the VND. Let me grab the other FX30. It's not too much bigger, uh, and it's definitely smaller than the FX30 with the cage on, but it's not too much bigger than the FX30 by itself. Really, what adds the size is this EVF right here, which I have been using a crazy amount. Uh, I find the EVF decent in this camera. It's, I don't think, quite as good as some of the higher end stills cameras or hybrid cameras from Sony, but I do find it at least a lot more comfortable to use to my eye than using something like the Sony a6700 where I was using the EVF on that camera quite a lot, but it just wasn't as comfortable and I could put my eye right up to this where it's a lot skinnier on this a6700. I didn't plan on using the EVF as much as I have with this camera, but I went and shot this cheerleading promo and I literally used the EVF for a lot of my handheld stuff almost the entire time with the 35 to 100 and it helped with stabilization as well. So mostly I've been shooting at 24p with the a7 IV. I've shot a little bit of slow motion, but not enough to say whether it's better or worse than the FX30. Uh, the one thing to remember is the FX30 in the normal 24p and 60p modes is downsampled from 6k, but it's pretty close to the 5 point something k. I'm sure I'll have the number here that it actually is on the a7 IV. I don't find it to be a huge difference in image quality. And that's why I kind of see myself using the a7 IV more as my everyday camera than the FX30, just because I can switch it between the full frame and uh, crop sensor mode and still have a really small body. The weight it's not doesn't really weigh that much more and I can get full frame and crop sensor. For me, that's a big deal where I can go on these trips and maybe have my super small sling bag and just bring my crop sensored lenses, but then bring my full frame in maybe my hand luggage, my suitcase, whatever it may be. And so I'll have it for when I need it. But when I'm just out and about and I'm getting video photos for fun, I could just be a lot smaller and more compact. Now, as I said, this is not a full review, but at this current point in time, where I see myself using this 35 to 150 is really more in a professional setting where if I wanna get the full frame look and have one lens that does it all, whether it's video or photos, that's where this lens is going to come in handy for me. If I'm just traveling out and about and I want a really small setup that I can fit maybe in a really small bag like this, this is a three liter bag uh, from PGY Tech, I could still fit my a7 IV in that bag and I can actually either fit two crop sensor lenses like the 18 to 50 and the 11 millimeter from Sony, or I can fit one lens and maybe like an audio adapter, like the, uh, I actually have an audio adapter in this right now. I have my Comica, um, these Vimo Cs, and it fits really easily. 
and it lets me go and create content very quickly, very easily, and I'm not carrying a big heavy bag. I could literally go running with that bag, go biking, do whatever, and it's a breeze. So this, weirdly enough, is my more professional lens, at least for right now when it comes to full frame. Uh, my buddy Jamie from Ronin Creative, he let me test out the 35 to 150 a few months ago when he's been using this a lot on his FX6. He loves the lens. I tested it and I never did a proper review on it because I felt like it was unfair to test a lens when at the time I only had two FX30s and testing it just on a crop sensor camera, just to me it wasn't a fair test. But now that I have a full frame camera and crop sensor, the ability to also go into crop mode when I'm at 150 and get that little bit of extra reach is fantastic. And that's why for professional use, this is what's going to be on my a7 IV. Uh, for some situations, I may even use this professionally on my FX30s. It really just depends if I need that reach or not. Because of course, yes, uh, a lens like this that's f2 to f2.8 and goes from 35 to 150, there's no way it's not going to weigh a lot. But I've really been happy with this combo. So if you have any questions, I do plan on doing a review of the 35 to 150 and a review, even though this camera's been out for a while, of the a7 IV. So stoked on it that I immediately knew I was keeping it versus when I had the a6700, even though I had all the lenses for it, just didn't make sense for me. So if you have any questions or any content you wanna see on this setup, make sure to ask in the comments below. If you've never been here before and you like what you saw, maybe hit that subscribe button and you'll see more content like this. But I do wanna thank all of you, especially bearing with me for these past few months of not putting a lot of content out. It's just been crazy busy with work, but I've been really excited to uh, be busy and be able to travel. And now that we're getting into the holiday season, I really only have one more big trip left for this year. So kind of be back to the uh, state of things. I'll do a live stream here soon, talking about the whole Axonar shoot and the process because I brought some friends of the channel to work on that gig. And uh, you guys will hear from them, I'm sure, soon. I did a podcast, actually, with Josh Satin and Brandon Talbot, who have the 16 Stops podcast. Uh, I did a podcast, actually, on set so make sure to tune in for that. I'll put a link in the community tab when that's out and in the description below. And I can't wait to talk to you all about what went down on that shoot because it was quite spectacular. So until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will see you in the next video.